how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at a 2014 Audi S5. This Audi is exhibiting DTCs for the cam crank correlation issues for Bank 2. This vehicle was brought to the shop I'm here looking at this vehicle for from another shop. The first shop has already replaced the VVT solenoids that control the phasers. That did not fix the problem and the problem is still present. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to take a scan tool and I just want to hook into this vehicle and I want to just verify the codes. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So we got the scan tool connected and right away I can see that we don't have any code set and all our monitors have not been run. That tells me that someone has cleared the codes on this. So the shop has already cleared them. So I'm not going to have any data here. I'm going to go to DTCs and I don't have any. But we have this paper in the car and this paper is taken from a VCDS scan tool and basically I want to look at the code and the code is telling me that bank 2 cam sensor 2 and basically this is a code for having an error or a, uh, a bank 2 correlation problem. Now I want to go down and I want to look at the fault frequency. I had this fail four times. So this code failed four times under this enabling criteria. Now the enabling criteria is really important because this is telling me that this vehicle is fully warmed up and it's at idle when this problem is happening. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a scope to this car so I can check the cam crank correlations and I also want to get on the VCT solenoids which is the control for the phaser system on the intake cam on this engine and then I want to go drive the car and I want to see what fails when I set the code so I'll better have an understanding of of what's wrong with this vehicle so let's go ahead and get the scope connected we've connected the scope ground to the battery negative terminal for proper testing now we've connected the oscilloscope to this Audi. Channel 1 is connected to the crank sensor which is underneath the car by the bell housing. I had to take off a couple of panels but we've got the crank sensor connected there. Channel 2 is connected to the cam sensor for bank 1. Channel 3 is connected to the cam sensor for bank 2. Channel Four is connected to the VCT control solenoid for bank one. Channel five is connected to the VCT control solenoid for bank two. And then I have an ECOP on the number one coil so we have a number one ignition event in case we need to time anything. Um, on our scope patterns. Now that we've got the actual connections made, we need to set up the scope. So let's go ahead and get in the car and set the scope up. We've got the oscilloscope up. We want to go ahead. The only thing I need to set up is channel six because I have an ECOP on it. So we're going to put ECOP into six. We're going to change the multiplier so we make that bigger. We're going to use 10. That makes it 10 times larger than what the ECOP is. This is the sink for the number one cylinder. It's an ECOP on the coil assembly. I want to go ahead and zero it. And now what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to make sure all my channels are connected. Everything is connected. So what what we want to do now is we want to come over and we want to go ahead and start this guy up and let's start the car up. Okay, so I heard the engine rattle a little bit, so now we need to look at what's going on. So we want to go ahead and we want to zoom in on this data and here's my data. Uh, let's go out just a little bit, let's get my zoom window, let's come in and look at this. Let's turn on these two waveforms right here. This is the VCT drives. I don't really want to look at those right now. What I'm interested in is looking at the crank and the cams. So this is the crank and this is the cams. Right away, these two intakes, bank one and bank two, should be overlaying each other like they are here. But do you see how divided they are right here? That is not correct. So let me go out just a little bit. I want to get a full cycle here. So here's my cycle. 
I want to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in again to make this a little easier to see. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to get the cursors and I want to bring the cursors over and I want to put a mark and I'm going to use the crank from the indexing point to indexing point to make a marker. Now, I have the grid off and I don't want the grid on. Now, what that gave me is it tells me my RPM and it tells me the time or the degrees. Now is what I want to do is I want to come in. Now I want you guys to look at this. Do you see how I'm narrow right here and they both line up? And do you see how I'm still narrow on the red one but I'm wide on the green one? And then this one, I'm the green one is way shorter and it's longer. So I want to do something here. Is what I want to do is I want to turn this other stuff off. Do you see how I have a narrow, a wider one, a wider one, and even a wider one? Well, that has to do with the time. Do you see how there are two narrows and two wides, and the two narrows are even and the two wides? This is bank one. Now let's shut bank one off and look at bank two. I have a short, a wide, a wider, and a real wide. Again, look at two. Narrow, narrow, wide, wide, and they're even is what this is telling me is the cam is changing its speed. Here the cam went fast and then the cam slowed down and then the cam went fast and then it slowed down. Let's overlay these. So now I can see these overlaid. I've got the cursors so I can clearly come in here and I can just measure the difference is what I'm interested in is measuring the difference here on these edges. So if I come here and we measure that difference, that's 30 degrees. That's 30 degree cam degrees difference. What's happening here, guys, is the chain is loose. So the chain on bank two is loose. So when the chain is slapping, it's moving around, it pulls tight and then it moves, it changes the speed of the camshaft. What you're actually seeing here, the camshaft speed changes. Bank two chain is loose. Now this is when we started this car cold. So I'm a little worried that this may not be the exact code. The code says that I have this set and it's set four times with the engine hot. So right now I think this is my problem, but I'm not going to condemn this motor right now. Those chains, if you guys have ever worked on one of these, the engine's coming out. It is a complicated chain setup. So we don't want to do that. I need to get the car to fail hot because maybe it has a different problem and we'd fix the chains and it wouldn't fix the problem. Now maybe the chain is the problem, but I need to confirm it. So we're all ready to, ready to drive the car. So what we need to do is go drive the car and see the other thing I need to do right away is I need to go back and I need to make sure that I didn't set a code. So let's reread them. And I didn't set a code. So there's no code set even though I have 30 degrees. And if we move through these, some of these might even be wider. Look at how much distance. Look at how slow the cam moved here. Notice the red one moved the right speed. Look at how fast that cam accelerated. The time is shorter. And then we're about the right time. Um, this is a lot of degrees right here. So let's grab these cursors again and let's just see how much time, how many degrees this one is off. Okay, so we got about 28. So this guy's 30 degrees off. Normally, I count 15 degrees per tooth, rule of thumb. That's two teeth out. That is a lot of, of chain slap. And it's what's amazing is it wasn't that loud. It just made a little bit of noise. It just wasn't, it wasn't super noticeable. Um, that almost makes me think maybe a guide or something's broken because if that chain can have that much movement, it should be beating against a guide. Maybe the guide already got beat off. I'm not sure. But what I want to do now is I want to get this car out on the road and we need to drive it in a certain fashion. I'm going to show you and we're going to try to confirm that this chain is what's setting the code. So let's go ahead and take it for a test drive.
We're on our test drive now and we've been driving the car for a while. I want to get it fully hot because that is where this code was setting. So now that we've got this engine warmed up, I want to change the scope. So I've put 10 seconds in fast capture. That will give me 10 seconds so I can make a pull and get the VVT to move and then pull over and let it idle and then check it at idle. The next thing I want to do is I want to come over and I want to check my codes and I can see that I do not have a code right now. So that's good. So now we want to make a pull. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get in it. We're going to phase the cams and then we're going to come back. Now when you come to idle, don't shut the scope off right away. Let it idle because that's where we're concerned with. This is where the problem is going to be. So now I want to stop it after we've had some idle time. Let's go ahead and shut all the other channels off because we don't need these other channels right now. All I'm interested in is the cam, the two cams comparing to each other. So here's a cycle. I'm going to do something that you don't normally do with waveforms. I'm going to put a boxcar style filter so I clean them so I can see these edges better. So right here, I can see that I have a deviation right here. Notice this waveform. Do you see how this one is right on top of each other? And then they started to shift here and I have more shift here because that chain is moving, guys. So now it's what I want to do is get the cursors, come in with the cursors and we want to measure a cycle. So if we measure the cycle, that's the cycle. We're going to mark it. So now when we move these cursors, it's going to give us the degrees. So now I want to take the zoom window. I want to come in only on this. We want to get the cursors and we want to come in on the cursors. Okay, so that's 12.4 degrees difference between those two cams. And I can see that this one is longer and this is shorter. That's because the chain is slapping and I have, or slack, it has slack in it. That's why this is longer. Always remember how long or short these are. That has to do with the physical quantity of, the, of what you're measuring or how fast or slow that's actually measuring. So now let me show you. I want to show you the, how you would see the control system. So we want to turn these on. And then we want to go ahead and hit zoom reset. And is what I want to do is we want to look at the controls. I want to explain something that's really important. Okay, so these two are my controls. So if I come up here, and we look at where this is, Bring the blue one down just one. So this is the on time. This is how much we're trying to control it. Now when you guys are looking at the VCT controls, the solenoids, it's one of the most important things when you're looking at cam correlation. I have enough cam phasing on a car to where I can actually have the timing chain out a tooth and these can move it and it will look like it's in time. So if you look at the cam crank and you're getting a crank correlation code and the engine's running, when it first started it saw it was out and it moves it, but when that happens, one bank has more on time than the other bank because it's trying to move the cams to be correct. If it jumped on the crank, both cams will have too much on time trying to move it, but the cam and crank waveforms can actually be correct, but the VCT control, that's on too long. Now we can come up here and we can see that this VCT control, they're on equal amounts. And the reason that these are equal and they're not on for very much is because this is happening so fast. This chain 
is loose. So one side of the chain is tight and the other side is moving up and down and it's giving that flux and that's allowing the gears to get out of time with each other. Now the computer, whoever programmed this car, never programmed to try to take care of something that's happening in milliseconds. It's trying to control the cam timing over a large period of time. So it's moving the phaser up and moving the phaser back. And so when you get something like this, you're not going to see it in the VCT. But the VCT solenoids are a crucial piece when you're looking at any kind of cam correlation type problem because depending on how much they're on or how much they're off will give me a clue. Also some cars like this when they get a problem like this you'll have another another issue. In other words I'll set a code and you'll go drive the car and these aren't moving. Well if these don't move it's locked the system. So I set a hard DTC and now the VCT isn't even trying to move the cams. So it's always good to look at this and to see if they are in movement or not. And over here we can come in and we'll look at these and so we get to see that these, this is the off time, this is the on time, and we can see that they're all very equal. So that's just an idea of how you need to keep your eye on the VCT. Now that we know that these cams are 12 degrees off, what I need to do is I need to check the scanner now. Now we're going to come in and now we've read the codes and we have the cam crank correlation for bank two. So now clearly we've proven that when that cam is the chain is fluxing and I get out far enough, 12 degrees is far enough to start to set a code. Well maybe if I have a flux and it's at six or eight degrees I don't break the threshold of the program. Now that we've gotten to 12 we clearly are setting a code. So I can correlate the chain movement to setting the code in one pole. That means that this chain is definitely causing the code. So as you can see, this is a very easy diagnostics, but this will not be a very easy repair. Those chains are complicated on this motor and the back of the motor. Like we want to make sure that you're accurate with your diagnosis. As I've shown you, if you use a very logical approach and you use the data-driven method, this is a very easy diagnosis and I'm positive that the chain is loose because the physical data is there. When I say the physical data, the cam sensor is reading a physical quantity off of this engine. That's physical data. So the physical data definitely shows me that the cam moved and it shows me the cam timing is moving by the pulse, the width of the pulse. Now I know the chains are loose and now I know the chain caused this problem. So now what we need to do is we need to take it back to the shop and then the shop is going to deliver it back to the original shop and they'll make a decision on what's going to happen. But to fix this car, we're going to have to do some chain work, which is a pretty big diagnostics. So it's really important to be accurate with your diagnosis. Follow a logical plan. You need quality tools in order to do this type of work. And if you do these things, you too will be successful in troubleshooting in your service space.